expertise is in rock mechanics. Where are the hard places these days in rock mechanics and where is rock mechanics going to? Rock is about the only thing that you can't change as far as mining is concerned. You can change the ventilation, you can change the processes, you can pick the mining method and so on, but you have to do with the geology and the ore body that you've got. So that as far as rock engineering is concerned, it's an absolutely essential aspect of uh, mining engineering. I'm just thinking about where rock engineering has come from. About 20 years ago, there were something like 600 to 800 people involved in full-time mining research in South Africa. If there are 40 now, it's a lot. Um, and a lot of those were rock engineering people. Uh, now there's, there's really very, very little, and I, it's something that worries me enormously. Not only the, you might say, the lack of mining research, but also the, the lack of focus on rock engineering, because rock falls are still the, the biggest killer in the mining industry. So it's, it's a worrying thing, and it's perhaps a worrying thing worldwide. Um, if one looks at the numbers of people worldwide in the geotechnical field, it's, there's a, a, a big shortage. In the mining field in general, there's a, there's a big shortage. Uh, along with two colleagues, one from uh, Canada and one from Australia, uh, we published a, a paper a couple of years ago in the SAIMM journal. And that really just indicated that if you look at those three major mining countries, uh, there is a huge shortage and it's going to get worse. And I, I think it's something that mining companies and the executives should actually focus on as far as a strategic uh, initiative is concerned. So the demand for these metals and minerals is growing quite strongly, but the supply of skills is not matching. What do you think the implications will be of that? Uh, it will be a problem as far as uh, safety is concerned, as far as efficiency is concerned. So I think it'll affect profits. It will affect uh, the, the new starts because there won't be people to do the feasibility studies and so on. Um, one of the factors that we perhaps leave out of the equation is we, we're talking about, uh, you might say, the Western world. But in China, there are plenty. I think in China, there's a thousand uh, rock mechanics students. So maybe that's where the solution is going to come from. And how many uh, rock mechanics students are there in South Africa and the rest of the world? Uh, relatively very small. If one looks at a, a normal final year class in mining engineering, there might be half a dozen that are interested in rock engineering. Most of those people go into um, ma mine management uh, and that's where their focus is. There's a few that go into rock engineering, so it's, it's, it's relatively small numbers that are being produced. And our minds are getting deeper in South Africa where we stand here. Anglo Goldashanti is talking about going beyond five kilometers. Yeah. Uh, what sort of uh, rock mechanics implications are involved in going that deep? Well, we, we know that uh, as you go deeper, uh, there's uh, rock burst problems, there's uh, increased seismicity, increased stresses, fracturing of the rock, and so on. And, and I think those things have to be taken into account. And I, I think they can be. So I'm optimistic uh, that mechanization, which I think is the way that we have to go at uh, deeper levels, mechanization I think will be feasible. It won't be easy and there'll be quite a number of risks, but I think those need to be evaluated up front and addressed, and the mitigation factors and alternative mitigation uh, methods actually contemplated uh, ahead of time. And I think that uh, if that is done, there is a way forward. I, I do think that the mining companies need to have very open minds as far as mining layouts are concerned. I think the traditional layouts with 30 meter panels, I think those should be reconsidered and those should be reconsidered in favor of layouts that in fact will suit the mechanization better. Maybe the opening sizes need to be much smaller and if we're taking out less rock uh, that can be accommodated but um, I, I think it, it, it really requires an open mind as far as 
uh, mining methods are concerned, mining layouts are concerned, and mitigation measures. What will the mine of the future look like? It will have far fewer people. I would think it would be smaller. Um, I think that one won't see as much rock exposed. Uh, and I think one will see quite a few machines around. And uh, I, I think that when one goes underground, uh, it'll perhaps be like our current mines on a weekend, that you, you won't see too much going on. But in the background, you might hear some noise and, and so on. And, th and that's the sort of thing that will happen, which is, I think, what, what one gets in the massive mines where you have big machines. There's no people around. Witz is the uh, largest English-speaking mining school in the world already. And we've had huge increases in numbers here. We're, we're really producing a large number of engineers, which I think is, is very good for the country. But I do think that a number of these people are going to go out of the mining industry into other industries like the banks. Some of them are going to go overseas. Some of them are going to go and work in other things completely. So uh, they won't all stay in, in mining. I think one of the things we need to do is uh, for the mining companies to make it as, as attractive as possible for mining graduates and also technicians and uh, artisans to, to work in the industry. Uh, artisans and technicians are also critical as far as the success of the industry is concerned. So they, they need to be encouraged uh, to go into those fields and to stay in the industry. Uh, as far as the, the world is concerned, I think uh, Australia is promoting mining more. Uh, I think Canada is promoting mining more, but relatively small numbers. It's, it's always perceived as a you know, dirty, dark and dangerous occupation. And I think we need to change that as well. It's actually a, a high-tech, exciting, stimulating uh, environment in which to work. Sitting in this world first mine design lab. It is meant to make sure that we can design the mine of the future and this is the place of the next generation of engineers. Those are all hoped for statements. Do you see any concrete evidence that this is starting to come through with students? Are we getting a better student emerging as a result of these fantastic facilities? We already see evidence that uh, the marks are improving. If we compare the marks of the class of 2011 with the class of 2010, there's a remarkable Im improvement in, in marks. At the first year level, the marks are about 30% higher because last year more than half of the students failed this, this introductory course. While we are seeing, seeing uh, students' uh, rates now, success rates of uh, 70 and close to 80% in some of the subject and that also applies to the higher, le higher years of study. So at the first year level because of your number of students there are two students at the desk. Uh, by the time they are, get to, they are getting to third year there's one student per computer uh, which is the ultimate objective of this facility for students to be exposed individually to uh, high level uh, computerized and software training. And how many students do you have now in the uh, mining engineering uh, arena at Wits University? Uh, last year we graduated 79 students from uh, Wits Mining. Uh, if you compare that to 10 years ago, the number was about 30. So it's a massive improvement in student numbers that, in students that we, are, that, we, that we are getting through the system. Uh, those, that's about two-thirds of the total mining graduates who will later qualify for professional registration at EXA. The other university is uh, Turkey's. So you need that mix, you need the engineer, you need the technician and you need the artisan all working together. From your point of view you're just dealing with a graduate engineer and a, a University of Johannesburg dealing with a technician and who's dealing at the artisan level? We were wondering ourselves where the next generations of generation of artisans will come from. It's a highly important skill that's required, especially if we start talking about uh, mine op automation uh, in order to do the services and in order to do the maintenance. <music>